Hello everybody and welcome to the first lesson of the simple harmonic motion topic. Now before you get into this series of videos I do suggest that you uh, have watched all of the circular motion videos first mainly because there's some of the maths in circular motion um, and a couple of terms from circular motion that we are going to be bringing forward into this simple harmonic motion series of videos. Firstly then, uh, what is simple harmonic motion, or as we quite often abbreviate it, ASHM? Well, there are actually quite a few different ways that we can see simple harmonic motion in action. Perhaps one of the easiest ways that we can see this is um, a very simple example of a child on a swing. We know that when you're sat on a swing, you are uh, moving backwards and forwards around about one central point. Now, of course, that central point um, is, yes, okay, eventually where you come back to, where you are just um, hanging on the, on the swing straight down. But when we start um, either being pushed or obviously propelling ourselves when it comes to a swing, well, then we start oscillating backwards and forwards around about that central point. You can also look at it as maybe a, a boat um, moving up and down on waves out at sea. And there are loads of other examples that we can go into. Perhaps one of the most classic examples that we use in physics, though, is that of a simple pendulum. Um, as you can see here in front of you, you have a pendulum moving backwards and forwards in a very similar way to a child moving on a swing. Now, the first thing that we need to define is this central position. And you remember I spoke about that uh, when we were talking about the child on the swing. Uh, and obviously we can see with the pendulum, uh, there is a central point. Now, at this point, the, uh, the bob itself at the bottom here is directly below the pivot at the top. If we now have a look at the forces that are acting on this object, there is the weight of the object, mg, acting straight down, and there is tension in the object acting, or sorry, in the string, acting back up along the string. Now, if that bob was just hanging there, minding its own business, um, then it's not moving at all and obviously we can look at Newton's first law uh, which obviously says that an object uh, remains at rest or in a state of constant motion unless acted upon by a net external force. Well at that point because it is at rest it is not moving there must be no net external force acting. The net force must be zero and therefore the tension in the string must equal the weight of the bob. Because the pendulum um, is therefore, uh, or we can therefore say that there is no force acting on the pendulum at that point, or no net force, we can say that that is the equilibrium position. Now, that equilibrium position, from a displacement point of view in the motion, we are going to define as zero. So we're going to use x for displacement, uh, may, mainly use x for displacement throughout this topic. And that equilibrium position that we can see there, we will define as x is equal to zero. Now, because displacement is a vector, what that means is that we do need to now make sure that the signs for our direction are correct. And therefore, anything to the left, we're going to say that x is negative. And anything to the right of that point, we will say that x is positive. The next stage with displacement is now to define the two extreme points to the left and to the right. So as I said before, this equilibrium point here, we're going to define as position is equal to zero. As we said, this side to the left, we're taking x as negative, And this side to the right, we're taking x as positive. Now, on the left-hand side, at the maximum position to the left, 
we're going to say that the displacement is negative x max and similarly on the right the displacement is positive x max Now, another name for those positions, um, we can also call that um, the amplitude position. So this one will be called negative A for the negative amplitude, and this one will be called positive A for positive amplitude. And there then is the definition of amplitude. So amplitude is the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position. The next stage then is we need to consider the velocity of this system. Now in order to do that we'll go back to the video. So just for a few seconds watch the pendulum closely and consider to yourself um, what's going on with the velocity and perhaps where is it moving quickest and uh, also where is it not moving at all during this motion. With velocity then while it's moving from the equilibrium position up to positive um, a positive x max we can see from the the uh, the video that it's moving to the right and then when it gets to positive x max it stops moving to the right and starts moving back to the left so the velocity for at least the first part of that motion has been positive and then it switches to being negative now, with any graph, with any uh, motion, if you go from a positive motion to a negative motion, you have to go through zero in order to get there. And therefore, what we see is that the velocity is zero at the positive amplitude position. And then by symmetry, the velocity is zero at the negative amplitude position. What that also means is that the object, the bob here, is moving quickest at the equilibrium position. And therefore, we can say that V is equal to V max at the centre, at the equilibrium position. And I will just put a plus minus sign in there, because of course it's maximum whenever it's at displacement zero, but it depends on which way it's moving at the time. Next then, we need to consider the acceleration of the system. Uh, we'll start at the equilibrium position again. We can see from the velocity that at the equilibrium position, the velocity is its maximum value. So if we start at the negative equilibrium, or sorry, the negative maximum displacement position, it's, it is at a velocity of zero at that point it will then accelerate back towards the equilibrium position. Once it's accelerated though and reaches the equilibrium position, it will slow down again. Therefore, the acceleration has stopped at the equilibrium position and therefore the acceleration is zero when x is equal to zero. Now, what we've said in here is that whenever the bob, whenever the pendulum is to the left of the equilibrium position, um, it will be accelerating in a positive direction. In other words, while it's to the left, the acceleration is acting to the right. Um, we've done it for going from minus x max to zero. If you think about it again the other way around, the opposite of that, um, if it is moving to the left, then as it slows down from v max to v equals zero at the amplitude position, it's slowing down and therefore the acceleration must be acting in the opposite direction. Now by symmetry, we should therefore be able to see that A is negative, in other words, acting in that direction, uh, when X, the displacement, is positive. As for the maximum values of A, once again, very similar vein to what we said about the direction of the acceleration. Uh, hopefully we can also see that A is the positive maximum. Uh, when we are at negative x max, 
as you can say positive a max at that point and then over here at the positive uh, maximum displacement position it is negative of the maximum acceleration now of course if if that isn't um clear at the moment just by looking obviously at a video of a pendulum um, and just doing some quick um, having a little think about it when we come on to the mathematics behind this in the second video um, and we start to explore the equations that are describing uh, the motion um, from a displacement of velocity and an acceleration point of view hopefully um, that will give this a little bit more clarity and allow you to show you uh, that those little bits that I've put there on the screen um, are of course correct. Now on the last slide what we managed to show was the following that when displacement was zero then acceleration was also zero. Um, when x was at the negative maximum displacement uh, acceleration was the positive um, maximum acceleration and conversely when x was at the positive maximum displacement position uh, then acceleration was negative a maximum now what we can see here is that we've got two different things going on Firstly, if we look at the magnitudes, then, then when x is 0, a is 0, uh, when x is x max, a is a max, and when x is x max, a is a max again. So from the magnitude point of view, we can say that the displacement and the acceleration are proportional to each other. Secondly, if we look at the direction, well, when x is negative, a is positive, and when x is positive, a is negative. So from a direction point of view, um, x and a are always in the opposite direction. So therefore, what we've already managed to do in a very short space of time is to show what the two key conditions for simple harmonic motion are. Number one, x is proportional to a, so displacement is proportional to acceleration. And number two, x is in the opposite direction to a, so displacement is in the opposite direction to acceleration. Now we can summarise that even further um, by saying that a is proportional to minus x. Just in that equation there, we've managed to give both of those two key conditions. We've got the proportionality, and obviously the minus sign shows us the opposite direction of the two vectors. And remember that obviously acceleration and displacement are both vectors, and therefore we do need to make sure, as I said earlier, that we're getting those directions correct. Now, realistically, that's the key thing, and that's the key idea behind this entire topic. If you can get your head around what has just been said, then the rest of the topic is going to be relatively easy for you. If you can't quite understand what is there now on the screen, then what I suggest you do is go back and rewatch it as many times as is necessary and make sure that you can get those two key ideas into your head. Now, obviously, if those two key conditions are met, then we do have a system of simple harmonic motion. If one of those two conditions isn't met, then the system is not oscillating in SHM. Now, before we finish the lesson, we do just need to get a couple of other definitions in. Um, firstly, we need to define what one complete oscillation is. Now, one complete oscillation must take in both amplitude positions and obviously the equilibrium position twice. Now, we can define it however we want, we can define the start point however we want as well. 
So when we come back to looking at the stills, we can choose your starting point in different places. If you choose to start it at negative X max, um, then it must take in the equilibrium position. It must take in positive X max. It must take in the equilibrium position again and must therefore get back to negative X max. Now, of course, alternatively, you can choose the equilibrium point as your starting point. Um, and you can see that the way I've done it, it is moving um, to the right. So it then goes from equilibrium to positive X max back to equilibrium to negative X max and then back to that starting point again. Now, of course, you could uh, do it in the opposite direction. You could start at positive X max and go positive X max to zero to negative X max to zero to positive X max. And you can do the same with starting at equilibrium, go from equilibrium to negative X max and then obviously back through um, to equilibrium again. It really, um, at least from a definition point of view, they all mean exactly the same thing. However, from a practical point of view, it makes more sense to use this version here. Um, in other words, to start, um, if you're measuring it, if you're using a stopwatch to try and measure these oscillations, to start your stopwatch when you are at the equilibrium position, and then obviously eventually stop your stopwatch when you come back to the equilibrium position again. Um, that will be covered more in one of the practice, practical skills videos. Um, so I suggest you have a look at that video uh, to make sure you understand why that option there is going to be the best option. Now, finally, from a definition point of view, the other two key terms that we need to define uh, are T for time period and F for frequency. Now, these two follow very similar uh, definitions to what we've seen before. Um, T uh, obviously stands for time period and is the time for one complete oscillation. Uh, F stands for frequency as usual uh, and is obviously the number of oscillations per second. From a unit point of view, time period as usual is measured in seconds and frequency as usual is measured in hertz. So there isn't a question for you for this lesson. Those will obviously come in future lessons when we get more into the mathematics behind SHM. Um, so to summarise then, obviously the main thing that we need to get out of this lesson are uh, the two key conditions for SHM uh, which are on the board. Uh, so X is proportional to A and X is in the opposite direction to A. And remember that we can summarise that as A is proportional to minus X. Uh, remember some of the other definitions that we came across in this lesson. Um, amplitude is the maximum displacement position from the equilibrium position, which is there on the screen for you. Uh, and then obviously we defined one complete oscillation. Uh, so from a starting point all the way through the motion and back to the same starting point in the same direction, if you're defining it from equilibrium. And then obviously from that, we got the usual definitions of time period and frequency. So that's all for this lesson. Uh, as usual, if you've got any queries, please get in contact. Um, otherwise, I'll see you for the next video.